Hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, my name is Ness Crouch. I'm here as part of the Aussie Live series. Um, today we have Karen presenting to us from northern Queensland. She's going to be sharing uh, with us about um, some easy apps to engage uh, students and learners. Uh, first of all, I'd like to really thank our sponsors and supporters. We are very lucky to be um, supported by the Learning Revolution Project with Steve Hargaden and Australia E-Series is bringing you this, this conference. Uh, Cyber Academy has been kind enough to sponsor us, so we thank them very much. And Coach Carolyn Shambles, our resident guru, uh, has been, have been great supporters of, of this conference, so we thank them as well. Now what we've got here is a little map to show where you are, so if you'd like to use the tool on the left hand side of the whiteboard screen and grab the smiley face or one of the world maps and move it to your location in the world. I'm right here on the north coast of New South Wales. We've got a couple of people in from Japan which is fantastic and from down in Victoria as well. So lovely. We'll probably have a few more people join us along the way. Okay. Okay, so that brings us to Karen's um, session. So if you have any questions, um, you can click on the little hand just below your name at the top and that will raise your hand and then we can um, direct you to, to, to speak. But other than that, welcome Karen. Thank you very much for presenting for us and we're looking forward to hearing what you've got to share. Karen, are you there? I'm not hearing you. I'm talking away to myself again, anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Thank you uh, for the chance for this. Um, and welcome, everybody. Now, I've just, today is all about those that have been disengaged, whether it's they've taken themselves off um, or they've been told that they can no longer work within the normal school system. Um, so it's been, they've been told that it's impossible for them to learn in their current circumstances and I decided that was rubbish. For the particular group that we've got, um, I was working with young people ahead and they're a, a group in Mount Isa who are all about helping uh, the four, from 12 to 25 year olds who are in Mount Isa and uh, need a little bit of help with life's problems. Uh, they are involved in volatile substance misuse, homelessness, uh, bail considerations for those that have been entangled in the law um, and just generally those that are looking for help. The group we decided on to, to train in the CERT 2 business were actually young mums ranging from 14 years old to 18 was the oldest. Um, and their little bubs ranged from six months to the oldest was about three or four. So it was uh, quite an interesting group. Now, before I start and tell you what went wrong, I'd love it if you could tell me what you think might go wrong if you were trying to teach a cert to business to a bunch of young mums with the babes still on the hip. Um, so, as you can see on the side there, there's the, the text box. Feel free to use the, the text box or the big A if you just want to type something and just whack it in. Great, so we just started already. Yeah, childcare is probably the most obvious one. Oh yeah, that happened a lot. <laughs> Children were sick and they decided not to come. Not having technology available is a good one actually. I'll let you know what we did about that one. Managing time was a huge one. Remember these, these guys were teens. Um, they had their own problems. Lack of resources was a huge one too, yeah. OK, 
Okay, great. So we've got a good list of things there, and you've hit up on the, the main things that uh, transport. Yep. <laughs> Someone out there has worked with teams before. Um, yeah, so that's you've hit upon the main things that were, were the issues. <laughs> yes, I have. Okay. So the challenges were that these ladies were, had been disengaged. Um, a lot of them had left school when they found out that they were pregnant and hadn't gone back. Now, for a few of them, especially ones where their little ones were, say, three years old, that means they'd been out of school for quite some time. Um, their skill levels ranged quite a lot from um, very low literacy levels up to quite high literacy levels, although their spelling and grammar was atrocious, um, to communication skills that were uh, very diamond in the rough through to quite good. Um, we were situated in it because we needed the childcare, we were situated in a building away from uh, youth pathways ahead. Um, and so the admin support was quite frequently out of sight, out of mind, and we didn't get a thing. <laughs> Um, and of course, these young ladies had had previous failures before when they tried to do something and it, and it failed. There was also a cultural issue for me. Um, the, the ladies were all Indigenous. Um, there was one that wasn't, but uh, she dropped out. And I'm from down south um, and Anglo, so I, even my, the Indigenous culture that I was used to was very different. Uh, down south, of course, they're, they're um, a different group altogether than the Murrays up here. Okay, so those are the challenges. And um, we mentioned transport and childcare. Those were actually taken care of from the, the group themselves. So uh, Youth Pathways Ahead, uh, that's fine, shambles, welcome aboard. Um, we're talking about young, young mums with their brothers still there. So they actually provided transport, they picked these ladies up and their young ones, and we actually did the course in the childcare centre. Uh, one of the challenges that happened that we weren't aware of at the time that we didn't take into account was the fact that the childcare assistant at that childcare place was an actually quite attractive young man, and uh, that was quite a distraction as well. <laughs> I think he spent as much time looking after the young ladies as he did the young kids. But anyway, uh, this is one of the young ones. His name's Obi, and he was so cute. He was gorgeous. I say babies on hip. Uh, but a couple, uh, one was still breastfeeding, and quite a few of them were still very close to mum. Uh, we had them wandering in and out of the room all the time. The opportunities, though, there were plenty of opportunities. Uh, these young ladies were really wanting to make a life for themselves and to break the cycle for their kids. Uh, they wanted a chance to get out from the poverty trap, um, and in some cases get out of Mount Isa. Uh, but they really wanted to to be able to find a place to uh, get a job and get some stuff going. They were also very motivated and very intelligent. Yeah, it's important to want to change, or otherwise, if if the student's goals aren't your own, then it's nothing's going to happen. Um, their intelligences, though, weren't academic. Uh, they were very intelligent human beings, but they they had uh, quite a lot of uh, self-confidence issues, mainly, around academic intelligence. So uh, although they were quite gifted in other social intelligences and things like that. So as a cater for the children, we actually went to a, a, a local drop-in children's room run by our local church, Catholic Church. And uh, as you can see, it was great for the kids. We had a playground. We had all the tools. It was all the safety equipment was there. And um, 
it meant that we could let them sort of virtually run amok and concentrate. The only problem, of course, is occasionally they ran amok in the room where we were trying to concentrate. <laughs> but um, it, it, did, it was very good for the children and the, the ladies were confident. This was where they always took their kids. They knew it. Um, so they were comfortable going there. It wasn't so good for the typing. Now, um, I'm not exactly an old school business teacher. Um, I actually believe that typing is on its way out. But you still got to do it. And um, as you can see, <laughs> they, they had some troubles. We did find that um, <laughs> definitely not enough muck in the world. Um, we did find that the tablets would only last sort of two or three hours uh, because we bought quite cheap ones being a charity organisation. There wasn't a lot of money going around. Uh, the tablets that we purchased were only about $80 each. Uh, having said that, uh, they worked really well, but charging them, as you can see there, we had to block off the cords uh, with arms and legs at one stage to make sure the little ones didn't get near them. Um, and we could only charge when they were down for a nap. So uh, it did make life interesting. One thing about the tablets, just while we've got this picture there, you'll notice that they've got the covers on them. Uh, I'll talk about this a bit later. It is most definitely an OHS issue and we had to be very careful to um, keep those cords out of the way. Uh, the tablets had a cover on them that had a keyboard. We found that the keyboard really wasn't worth turning on unless you were doing a lot of typing because it did drain the, the battery quite fast. Um, however, it did give a nice stand for them to be able to use it or you could fold it back and just hold it or as you could see you could take it out of the cover and just use the tablet. So that worked quite well. Yeah, yeah, Bluetooth is the problem. Uh, the tech we used was actually an Android tablet. Now I'm a huge Android fan. Um, I did however provide Ness with uh, links for Android tablets uh, for when we get to the apps later for Android Windows and iPad, uh, mainly because you never know which one you're going to end up using. As far as being an iPad user versus an Android user versus a Windows user, there's really not a huge difference. Uh, once you're in the actual application, they, they work just fine and uh, like obviously iPad was there first and it's got the most apps. Android's pretty close now though. Um, Windows is quite a while, way behind at the moment but it does, it's catching up fast. Yes, that's exactly right, Shambles. The, the, the screen brightness is a huge difference. Um, I'd actually preset all of the tablets to the lowest energy use so that it can be um, a big difference. Now, the Android tablets we used were a 10-inch one, which I do prefer. The 7-inch was fine for the kids. I shouldn't call them kids. Uh, for the teens. Uh, my daughter, I, we actually bought hers, would you believe, from Super Cheap Auto. <laughs> and um, the, oh, I didn't know that about the battery. I should try that on my Android and see if it works. Um, you can get them from the post office and from Woolworths and Coles, for Pete's sake. This technology has definitely arrived. Um, but I found for the younger ones, the seven inch screen, they were, because they're so used to working off their mobiles, the, the um, seven inch screen was actually an ample amount for them. For me, my arms aren't really long enough to bring a seven inch screen into focus. <laughs> so that's why I preferred the 10 inch. Um, 
Even the quite cheap ones now have got a 1.2 gigahertz processor and 512 mega RAM, 8 gig of internal storage. So that's more than ample to run just about everything. Although I did find that if we had two or three programs running at once, it was a lot better to clear the memory before opening something else, before going ahead. Yes, Sharon, I agree, it's too small for me to. Um, but when we were using the cameras, though, and the video, the, the ability to have a micro SD card slot is definitely a, a huge bonus because you can throw all of the, the photos and the video straight onto the, the card and you don't have to worry about it using up the memory on the tablet and slowing it down. Uh, the other good thing about that, of course, is that the SD cards can then go into straight into the printer or straight into something, uh, another camera or something like that and, and go for it. So, um, yeah, Charles, I agree. For, for us, where we like the, the bigger screens, uh, but I found the younger that people started using uh, phones and tablets and, and smartphones, the smaller the screen that's comfortable for them because they're just used to it. Uh, the photos that we had were a two megapixel camera uh, and just the standard mic that came with the tablet. It worked just fine. You didn't need anything more than that. And all of the photos that I'm using are the ones taken with those cameras. And they're not brilliant, but hey, they work just quite well. And of course, I've already mentioned the keyboard and the cover. <laughs> yeah, I've got to put the old glasses on too nowadays. Um, is there any questions anybody wanted to ask me about the tech before I go on to the next section? Okay, we seem to be okay. We'll go on to the next bit. If you think of something, just whack it in the screen. And that's, sorry, in the chat, and that will let you know. Okay, so networking. Uh, now, the Samsung group, I myself have actually got uh, a Samsung notepad as my tablet that I use for my everyday. It actually has programs that uh, share the screen and a group screens. You can also hook them up to a projector or a printer wirelessly. Uh, if you've got uh, a wireless USB hub that's got that WPS button, uh, it works so easily. You just push the button and, and all three hook up. Projector, printer, tablets, the lot. They just all talk to each other and it's just that simple. Um, the absolute worst is that you've got to type the password in. That's about it. And I didn't even have to do that. Now, we couldn't afford one of the bigger hubs. Uh, I used a wireless USB, just the, the old cheapo one from the post office. They're about $60. Um, you can have up to five devices on those. Um, and at one stage, I actually had six. Um, and before we got the, the USB stick, I was actually using my own Samsung and just shared the internet wireless hotspot from that. And on one time when my tablet had run out, I actually used my phone. Um, all of those worked quite well. And the good thing is because if we wanted to go out into the playground for the kids to play, we could take the hub and everything with us so we didn't have to worry about how far away we were or whether or not it would project that far. Um, the security side of it was actually quite good because if you got more than sort of 500 metres from it, it didn't work anymore anyway. So <laughs> it was one of those strange things. Now, a lot of people ask me, should you use the shared screen or should you use the projector? I actually had a hard copy of the whatever it was that we were working with. But I found, by and large, I just got the ladies to navigate to whatever page I was on and I put it on their tablets and they, we just read it off the screens. 
and they became very comfortable with navigating around the tablet and opening up different programs very quickly because they had to follow along. It also helped with keeping their attention. Uh, it was a change of state because they had to you know, move on to the next page and things like that, and it kept them focused and on track. So as much as those other programs actually work quite well and projectors quite, work quite well, I ditched them very early on because I found just getting them to, to navigate to where I wanted them to go worked so much better. Okay, the next one. Free is good. Actually, free is great. <laughs> Small is good. Uh, I like to keep the apps under one or two megs if I can, just purely because you can run two or three of them at a time without them chewing up the memory and slowing the tablet down. Um, yes, yeah, it wouldn't be the first time that I've had to use my phone to, to tether. Uh, the only problem with free apps is that quite frequently they have adverts on them. Uh, now, I just got the ladies to, to sign and say, oh, thank you, Ness. She's actually putting up the links for each of the areas where you can get apps. Um, I got them to sign a thing to say the adverts are nothing to do with the course. They are not to click on them. Um, they are just adverts, and I also found they were very good at just mentally ignoring the fact that they were there. They were so used to having things pop up on their screen and just getting out of them straight away um, that I found it really wasn't an issue so long as I'd covered myself that they knew it was nothing to do with me. Um, I did have to be careful that they were age-appropriate adverts sometimes, so I tended to use programs that were suitable for young children. Um, purely just because, well, one, they tend to be very good apps <laughs> for new users, but also that the advertising was appropriate. Now, the other thing I did was allow students to choose which app they were going to use to do any particular task. I had preloaded some apps. Um, I preloaded an office suite, uh, I preloaded an art program and a file explorer, but then I let them choose from there. Now, how do people feel about that? Um, there's, those are the sorts of things that I had preloaded. The brainstorming we'll go into a little bit later. Uh, the typing skills, I'd actually downloaded one that was just a timed one where they could race the clock, and then I did another one where as they typed it killed off asteroids and monsters and so forth. Um, some liked one, some liked the other, some downloaded a completely different program that worked better from them. Uh, so we, we actually allowed the students to keep the tablets at the end of the course, which was another good thing about it going cheap. They were a bribe to keep the ladies turning up because they didn't get to keep the tablet unless they passed. Um, so we were a lot freer with the uh, technology side than if it was something that we owned. Uh, I am a big believer, however, of letting them go for broke and then just wiping them back to factory settings at the end of the course. <laughs> uh, but let's have a little poll. Would you let them choose which apps that they want? And you can see an A over on the side of your screen where you, you can go A, B, or C. So A for yes, B for no, C for depends. Um, and I know for some of you, you don't have a choice, but if you could choose, which way would you like to go? <laughs> We've got a lot of depends here. Uh, it looks like just about everybody's given it a whirl, so I'll just post that poll. As you can see, um, most people said it depended, and I found that yes, that 
it depends on the student. Some of them faced with the idea of going into the, the, the play group and searching for their own app to be quite terrifying. Um, and for some I, with uh, mental or learning disabilities, I could see that being very true. Uh, the young ones, though, are so, I mean, my daughter was bringing up her own apps um, from about the age of six. So they're so used to it. <laughs> Um, Ian's put up a, an office link. Do you want to uh, share with the group, Ian, what that, that one's for? Are they typing in? Yeah, it's, it's the um, new way where Microsoft's doing collaboration with documents and all that, so it's a, it's a good one that's been done up with Microsoft. Excellent, yes, and of course Google's been doing that sort of thing as well. Um, the, uh, I was about to say SkyDrive, but Microsoft's changed it to OneDrive now. Um, it is actually quite good for being able to share documents, I 100% agree. It works really well. Um, I couldn't use it on the Android tablets, uh, but I could use U Google Docs, of course, and that worked just as well. Um, yes, and there, there are a lot of apps out there that help you find apps, <laughs> which, is, which is strange, but it works quite well. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Now, the as the program progressed, there were some really, oh, you've got OneDrive working on your Android Ian. That's interesting. I'll have to give it a whirl. It's working on my Samsung, but that's um, Android 4.3, and these were only 4.1. So maybe that's where the cutoff level is. Um, for those of you who are not Android users, it's sort of like the difference between iPad 1 and iPad 2. Uh, very similar sorts of cutoffs and things like that. Um, the learnings that I got as I was going through this program were many. I learned just as much from the students, I think, as the students learned from me, if not possibly more. <laughs> um, but probably the biggest one was don't be afraid to join in. Now, there's, amongst the youth, uh, the Indigenous youth, there's a real, what's known as shame factor, um, where it's trying something new, and when that challenge hits, then it's a sh uh, they sort of lose space if it doesn't work for them, and so they can be quite reluctant to try it. Uh, so what I did, as you notice, I'm, I'm quite the, Vogue model, and I have no problems whatsoever of getting in front of the camera because of you know just being so beautiful in front of a film. Um, <laughs> so they figured that if I was willing to take my photo, um, then they could do it too. Um, they being a lot younger and, and better looking than I was than I am. Um, so. For the first couple of uh, photo shoots in particular, I got them to take photos of me and then they were fine of taking photos of each other. Um, I then had to do that again when we started doing scenario work where I got them to film themselves uh, doing phone chats and I got them to film themselves serving customers. Uh, and various other scenarios, and again, I had to film me first, and then they were fine afterwards. So joining in can be quite good. Uh, good question, Shambles. What they did with the pictures, uh, some were used in posters, so we put up workplace health and safety. This particular one was a workplace health and safety poster. So we use those as OHS posters. 
Um, others were used as a, a sort of an e-portfolio of work. So whenever we did a particular project or something, we would take photos of it. Um, and that was proof of evidence that they had created this particular item. Um, there was also times with the photos when uh, it kept the kids quiet. <laughs> so we did a lot of things where we took photos with the, with the children to keep them quiet. The way they shared them within the group, uh, before we got the hub, uh, we just emailed them to each other. So they all set themselves up a, a Gmail and uh, just emailed them backwards and forwards. Uh, some of them, uh, at the end of the day, I would uh, gather up all the SD cards and save all of that onto a drive so that I would have copies of everything um, and just as a backup in case they got deleted by mistake or something like that. Um, they also were encouraged to sort of send them to friends and to post them on Facebook, um, to share them on Flickr and places like that, to show their, their peers what they were up to and how well they were doing. So they actually got quite a kick out of the fact that they could show other people outside of the class. Now, of course, we had to include that in the authorization that they were allowed to show those pictures to other people if they were showing pictures of each other. Um, but pictures for themselves, I let them send them wherever they wanted, um, so long as they were workplace appropriate. Uh, <laughs> because we're on church grounds, um, there were some where, you know, hand signals and things like that meant that uh, I put the veto on those particular ones. Yeah, that's a great idea. The free Flickr account to set it all up um, does make a, a, a really good place to put things. Um, I found that uh, OneDrive and Google Drive also allowed you to, to share the photos within the group there. Um, I'd actually made their Google Drive private to the group, uh, so they had to use social media to get it outside of the group. Okay, any other you know, hints and tips that other people have found or ideas on that one? Questions about privacy concerns or that sort of thing? I really want to get off this photo, guys. So we might head on. Okay. Um, we were saying about it being workplace appropriate. <laughs> we were doing, uh, based, the, the search of business was based around them. Yes, that was me. <laughs> that was me being unsafe in my chair. Um, we based the whole search to around the idea that they could print their own T-shirts to sell to their friends and their family. Uh, or to the general public. So they were coming up with t-shirt slogans and things like that that they wanted to be able to put on their shirts. Now, one of the cleanest ones they came up with at first was Blink If You Want Me, which I, have, I actually found quite clever. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of ones pointing to various body parts and saying, hey, I'm up here and that sort of thing. <laughs> yes, it was a lot suggestive the way she <laughs> she was phrasing it, um, but I'd put the kibosh on those. Um, however, I showed them how to make their own t-shirts, so I would be very surprised if I don't see them down the street with um, the ones that they they wanted. We ended up doing basically pictures of their kids um, and just the YPA slogan and those sorts of things. So, uh, yeah, they were a bit too suggestive for our organisation as well. Um, so you did need to keep it real and not uh, have a go at them for these sorts of slogans, but you did also need to 
make it very clear what is business and workplace appropriate and what is not. Because then the whole point of the Cert II is getting them ready for working in the workplace. Um, yes, they, the websites online, I was actually getting them to iron on their own transfers and make them themselves. So we bought the t-shirts from the local Best and Less and they were only like $5 each. Um, and then we ironed on the transfers and we made them ourselves. Um, there was a bit of fiddling. Unfortunately, the transfers we got couldn't do onto black t-shirts, which was really unfortunate. Uh, but other than that, it was it worked really well. And they could do three or four. And to be brutally honest, I mean, that still only cost us 20 bucks. So it wasn't that big a difference. As far as the Facebook was concerned, um, they were their own Facebook pages. So I didn't monitor them because they weren't mine to monitor. They were their private pages. Uh, but work that went up on the YPA Facebook, that was monitored um, and was only released by the manager of the YPA. So um, he went through and, and said yes or no of what went up. So we emailed him a whole bunch of stuff and he picked out which ones he wanted to, to put up, which had the best of both worlds then. Yes, and thank you, Ness. She's put up the Young People Ahead uh, link there if you want to have a look. Yeah, if it's your own Facebook page and you're teaching safe social media usage, then definitely, yeah, you would have to monitor it. That's the, the only way to go. Yes, the whole thing was about having fun. Uh, there's no point learning if you're not having fun. Uh, I'm a huge believer in games in learning and uh, the retention rate has increased, Your uh, the amount of students that turn up, which is a huge issue in our area um, because we do have the tradition of walkabout up here. Um, and if they, they very much tend to vote with their feet, if they don't like you or if you do something country culturally inappropriate um, or there's issues in their personal life, they just vote with their feet and out the door and you never see them again. Um, I've had people disappear on me at morning tea, at lunchtime, <laughs> just not turn up the next day. Um, I did find, however, that these girls, the bribe of keeping the tablet really did work and keeping them there. But the more important one was that, that sense of group. The girls had quite a good group. <laughs> yes, kukia is an Australian word. It means madcap or, or crazy or slightly offbeat. Um, the, so, Oh, I've lost my train of thought there. <laughs> the, the, so that sense of community was actually the most important reason that they came back. No, not related to Nookie in any way. Although you can have kooky Nookie, but no. no. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the next slide before we slide further downhill. <laughs> All right, the next thing I found, because we were working in, within a charity organisation, were resources were extremely tight. So we used what we had. Right, uh, right at the very start of the program, when there was still that shame factor going on with the photos, uh, there were quite a few new dolls and toys around, of course, uh, being in a child, <laughs> child centre. So we actually used the dolls in our OHS posters. Um, so as you can see there, we were saying don't leave the chemicals down near the babies, um, don't leave the cords down near the babies, and um, showing some of the consequences of that. And the dolls were actually quite good because we could wrap a cord around a doll and it didn't matter. The one thing I did find 
<laughs> the, the one thing I did find with those was that um, we did have to be careful that the children were out of the room when we took the photos because they tried to emulate us. Um, and if we put the, the tablets down to do some paper and pen work or um, we were doing some group work and just chatting amongst ourselves, um, the tablets would go missing and they would we'd turn up with the kids taking photos of each other and the dolls and um, recording their voices and stuff like that. The children, uh, the, the two that were doing it, one was three and one was four. So um, yeah, <laughs> they picked it up real fast. Um, actually, the little the little girl, the four year old, um, you'll see her right at the end. She actually picked it up faster than one of the the kids, <laughs> um, no, the actual students. Uh, so I'm a big believer. If you want someone to teach you the computer, use a four year old. They are amazing. They really are. It was actually quite good to have the children there on that particular occasion because I could get around the shame factor by saying, look, if the bubba can do it, you can do it. Um, and they did really well. Um, in fact, I could almost, I almost couldn't get the tablet back off of, um, oh, I've forgotten her name now, but the, the little girl, she, I actually ended up having to give her my tablet. Um, I gave her my phone once. I didn't do that again because she called her grandma. But and she was in Dumaji, <laughs> which is a long distance call. Uh, yeah, don't ask me how she knew her grandmother's phone number. I do not know. But um, yeah, on my tablet, I dis I disengaged the phone and let her play on that one. Um, and she did some gorgeous photos and things. Um, I kept a couple of them. Yeah, so. Don't be afraid to use the weirdest things to get around issues. The next one was the tech. Um, it was really good. Uh, yes, some of the students, uh, one has gone on to actually do her uh, traineeship uh, in a business. Um, the other one, unfortunately, her and her uh, significant other split up virtually right after the course. Uh, so she sort of went off track a bit. I'm hoping that she will get back on. I know that she's gone into uh, one of the art programs at the YPA, so hopefully that will that will get her back on track, we hope. Um, so you can see that one of the problems we had was whenever we tried to do pencil and paper work, yeah, it was positive, it was good. Um, when we did pencil and paper work, the kids wanted to join in and as you can see the safety hazards on the camera one. <laughs> they were very colourful by the end of it. We had, um, we had real troubles getting them to, to not draw on our stuff, whereas when they were on the tablets, it was a lot easier to do a, a picture even if we were just manually drawing the pictures ourselves um, and not have the children sort of butt in on what we were doing uh, or, or want to join in quite as much. After the first couple of days, then the tablets just became another thing that they were using and the, 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 the kids trying to steal the tablets all the time. Uh, when I say kids, I mean the babies not the students. Um, so the, the babies stopped trying to steal the tablets after a while because they'd sort of gotten over it. Okay, so just to get on to the end of this one, the cameras especially, we could uh, do whatever we wanted. That part of the tech didn't work um, because they we couldn't get the printers to write to the end and we couldn't get the password on the USB stick. So the way we kept the workplace uh, health and safety certificates and that website, if anybody is in Queensland, is brilliant, absolutely gorgeous. 
uh, the way we kept their certificates was we took photos of them and we sent those on to the others. Uh, the brainstorming one I thought would not work and it worked brilliantly. The ability to be able to use different colours and to take something from one section and to drag it into another section actually made the process a lot clearer for them. I, uh, it was just a free uh, brainstorming app that was available on in the Play Store. They, uh, the tablets that we had couldn't do screenshots, but yes, most of them, you yeah, could have done a screenshot and email, that's right. Um, I tried pencil and paper brainstorming and they didn't get it. When I went onto the app, they got it just fine. They picked it up like that. So it was really good. Surprised me, actually. Um, they had some rough edges with the technology. Typing and, and writing hadn't been their thing. Now, I don't know how well you can read this at all, um, but just to give you a, a notice, I don't, but what I will do is I'll find them and I will post them up into the OzLive just underneath where I put the, the list, if that works for people. So where my presentation is listed. Okay, so um, I had them do a scenario where they were picking up the work phone and I had them do it as a bad way and then a good way. To give you an example, like you'll notice there is not a single piece of punctuation on that entire page, including capitals. But anyway, um, the bad way, hey girlfriend, what's happening? Nothing much. When you do finish work, we get drunk at eight. And she spelt customer C O S T O M. But the good way, as you can see, they definitely do know what they're doing. It was just the, the putting the grammar in that made the difference. So the phone rings, hello, this is Shakala from JJ's. How may I help you today? Hello, Shakala, would you be able to hold a pair of jeans, size, slim size 34, please? Blah, blah, blah. So they definitely did have the skills and being able to role play it and do the scenario to videotape themselves to actually record their voices and hear how they came across, it really did make a huge difference. Um, and then when I showed them what their typing looked like compared to what I expected it to look like, and of course your red squiggly line for all of the spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes with the green squiggly line, um, they really got that idea of proofing and editing. Okay, but in the end, of course, it all came good. Uh, three of the class of 10 actually uh, graduated and completed their Cert II. Uh, a lot of the others got some really valuable things but didn't get to keep the tablets. Uh, one, unfortunately, she broke her bail conditions. Um, and two of them left town. <laughs> uh, so those were sorts of unavoidable things that we couldn't really do much about. So that's the girls with the certificates. And the little one that I was telling you about that was making all the phone calls and taking all the photos, she's the one in my arms. Um, they are really the hardest part of this entire course was not taking those little ones home. OK, so uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, that was really fantastic. Are there any questions or anything other than me posting up those apps for you on the site that uh, people want me to do or answer? Feel free to do a certificate of typing going on, so we might give them a second. Sure. Yeah, there is some typing going on, so we'll give them a second to say something. Um, but thank you so much, Karen. That was really was really interesting because even though I don't work in um, high schools or adult education, some of the strategies you've used to engage your learners would certainly apply to my primary school classroom. So it was great. Thank you. And Sharon saying thanks. Very interesting. Yes, not a problem. Yeah, I found that. Um, we tend to underestimate how young these, these people can pick them up. Um, I've also found that the good thing about doing it on the tablets is for those with dyslexia and, and other areas like that, 
you can change screen colours and things very easily to help them with that process. Um, even some of the, the yes, learning tools can be worked. Mm -hmm. Uh, anything else, guys? Yeah, I, um, my mind mapping tool I use with my primary school kids is called Poplet, which you can get a free version of that, and it's really fantastic for small children. I've also used one that's available on Google called MindMap. So, lots and there's so many choices out there for mind mapping tools, which is fantastic. Um, so, some positive feedback back there for you, Karen. Lots of thank yous and great sessions. Even got some stars there from um, Ian. Uh, um, if uh, Shambles has a has a um, little message there for you, Thanks. yes, Shambles, uh, I'll send it through to you if you if you like. I have actually got it up on SlideShare already, uh, just under my own thing, but I'll I'll send it through to you. Okay, so I've just finished up by saying thank you so much, Karen. Um, that was a really interesting session and it's great to see so much good work going on in Australia. Thank you to everyone for attending and we'll finish the recording now. Thank you.